come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits? The Saturday Night Freak Show. <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. High Energy Colin comes at you every Saturday night. <laughs> brought to you by Mattel. I don't know what. Okay. <laughs> Andre <laughs> Champagne. Andre's California Sparkling Wine. The best bottom shelf you can buy. You damn strain. I was curious. <laughs> what was one bottle be thrown out there. Yeah, no, no, Mattel. Is, I like, so it's always brought to you by right Mattel. Yeah. Uh, so we're a movie review podcast that records every week. A new episode drops every week everywhere that fine podcasts are found, including iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn, iHeartRadio, and more. Uh, you can find us on the social medias on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. On Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. You can email us. <laughs> Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. You paused. And well, because I'm like, maybe we should be doing this in a different order. Social media. To, and then Instagram yeah. at Saturday Night Freak Show. Nah, I don't think it matters. Yeah. All right. Nobody's uh, going <laughs> to. Never mind. Why would we do it in a different order? It doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. No, uh, <laughs> we're not getting too many messages on email, I don't think. That's true. Uh, so that's why we need you, listener, to uh, write in. And we will Please read do. your comments. Uh, we read every single one of them. But we'll read some of them on the air later in Igor's mailbag. Stick mm-hmm. with us right before the... Uh, we'll do that right before we get to our final wrap-ups, which is the most exciting part of the show. Well... I think it's pretty exciting. I mean, I like it. I think it's pretty <laughs> exciting, but most exciting, I don't know. So, tonight's movie was chosen by... Colin! Yes, Sean. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> this is kind of special, Colin. What did we watch tonight? Uh, we watched... Uh... Well, I know why you're saying it's special. I can't it's, lead it. It's, it's a it's milestone. The, it's, it's the Delta it Force. This is the first movie that we've ever done that stars the man, the myth, the legend. Sir Chuck Norris. The beard. The beard. <laughs> the the beard, mullet. The beard the mullet. with a fist hidden in it. <laughs> yep. The roundhouse Chuck kicks. Norris. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, giraffes, where they came from? It's because Chuck Norris did an uppercut to a horse. I want Colin to tell Chuck Norris <laughs> jokes for the all next night. hour and a half. That's all this episode is, Because I don't is, think they're going to come out right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you, you know, know, when Chuck Norris does push-ups, he doesn't push himself up. He pushes the earth down. You know, Chuck Norris doesn't flush the toilet. He scares the shit out of it. <laughs> Chuck Norris once pissed in a semi-truck's gas tank. You know what that truck's called today? Optimus Prime. <laughs> Your delivery is just it's not. astounding. <laughs> Did you know Chuck Norris doesn't mow his lawn? He just dares the grass to grow. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what the sound of Chuck Norris clapping with one hand is? Thunder. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many better ones. Than what we've, There's so many better ones. No, no, no. This whole premise peaked. Five, eight years ago, or something like that. We are way yeah, behind. Well, I know, but that's so the, behind. we are so far behind with Chuck Norris. I think we are. Movies. I think we all are. Yeah. Uh, we should say this one comes from the year 1986 and was directed Ooh. by Menachem Golan. Menachem Golan, of course, we all know here on the Freak Show as the director of Over the Top. Mm-hmm. Oh, shit. But and he's also. Several other canon films because. Golan Globus. What was it Operation Thunderbolt or something like that? And the I mean, Apple? The Apple, yeah. Oh, God, the Apple. The I will Apple? never make you guys watch that. I'm sorry. I, I won't. It's their misbegotten uh, musical. It I is think. their oh, no. Xanadu, oh, right. I guess I, I would say. Like, I mean, oh, yeah. that's not even close, but it's I, as close oh. as I can describe it to well, be. Well, wait till next week, folks. It's my pick. <laughs> it's, like, it's like a weird <laughs> canon version you. of Xanadu and Across the Universe. Imagine, wow. imagine wow. like the nightmare you are version saying of that. all of the wrong things <laughs> yeah, right yeah. now. But imagine it's 1980. Yeah, and you have no money. <laughs> imagine okay, that. these are the good <laughs> things you're saying. <laughs> I mean, and that's why I want to watch it. it ju- you just stepped up a notch. I'll give you that. Yep. But yeah, it, no. it's no, it's not good. It's do I want to watch Xanadu? No. no. Do I no. want to watch Across the Universe? No. I don't. Something. No. I don't want. What is what does Xanadu do? I know I've heard of Xanadu. Olivia Newton John. Olivia Newton John. Roller skating. Roller skating musical. Yeah. Okay. With um. I don't want to watch it. Wasn't Gene Kelly in that too? I I don't I don't remember. Pretty sure he was in that. Fuck that. Don't know. 
pretty sure it was one of the last things he did. Probably. Poor Just Burmier. really Blew sad. His brains out. Yeah, that's right. Let's not yeah. remember him for that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, but Menachem Golan was also, he was the second uh, producing partner in the conglomerate known as... The Cannon, Cannon Film Group. Along with uh, Yoram, Yoram Globus. Globus. Yoram Thank you very much. It was Golan Globus. There. You may remember our Summer of Canon featuring Michaela. <laughs> It'll come back. <laughs> yes. It'll come back soon. Don't <laughs> worry, guys. But the, the reason that Canon Films and Chuck Norris like go hand in hand is because it seems like most of Chuck Norris, like the reason we know Chuck Norris primarily is for his Canon films. There was Chuck Norris. Is it? And there was Charles Bronson at Canon, and they actually at one point I heard they had a st- like the two they would get scripts and put them either in the Chuck pile or the Chuck pile. <laughs> I mean, uh, my my childhood I knew him from Walker Texas. Ranger. I was going to say, yeah, uh, same. Going through his yeah. uh, filmography as I just was before we started this podcast, I don't know him from movies. No. I know him from Walker Texas from Ranger. television. Yeah. yeah, I know him from Sidekicks. Side. Fucking kicks. <laughs> For me, it's Todd. Come on now. And that's it. Come yeah. on, son. I oh, don't good I God. don't know Chuck no. Norris movies. This I do is, not watch Chuck Norris movies. This is my second Chuck Norris movie. This, this, same here. This is a huge weakness of us at the at the freak show here is Chuck I don't Norris. think it would benefit us to make this a strength. <laughs> I, no, I'm just not, saying. I'm, not, I'm not arguing that. I'm just saying like we'll, we'll, we'll own it. This, this, this is not right. a strong suit of ours. This is not know? an area we yeah. explore a lot. Yeah. It's not an expertise of ours, you know? Well, I've seen more Chuck Norris movies than you guys have, but still, there is a what, deficit. Three? <laughs> no, I've seen, when you were reading those off, I'm like, yeah, okay, I saw Missing in Action. Yeah, oh, yeah. I saw, well, I mean, he was big for Missing in Action, because I think that actually came All out the year them. before Rambo First Blood Part Two. Uh-huh. But before that, like he, there was the cult of him being in the uh, Bruce Lee, you know, like he trained with Bruce Lee or something. It was in Game of Death, I believe. He might be in that one, and it's then the dragon one. Once he's in like a like in the seventies. He was in a bunch of movies that I don't know if you could consider them action films, but he was like one of the first action heroes. Like he was on the scene before Sylvester Stallone was. You know, I mean, as sure. like the cop who does things his own way. It was kind of like after Dirty Harry. There was yeah, the cop who can't be stopped. <laughs> Chuck Norris. I mean, I believe you. I, I, I believe you too, but. <laughs> Yeah, how I'm many of those his are like tonight? Like, is it like this in every Chuck yes. Norris movie? This is then I don't care. This then is Chuck I, Norris. Then when why is this? Here's, why is he a here's, thing? Here's the thing. This though. is a good question. Why? Because I don't understand but the here, man. Here's here's my question though. Do other Chuck Norris movies feature the Chuck Norrisness that we got in the last like 15 minutes? Is it explosions that's and shooting even, and that's jumping through windows and stuff. jumping through windows? Necessarily Chuck Norris. I'm trying to think of the ishness. most action-packed Chuck Norris movie that I've ever seen because I guess at the time I remember going to the theater when you know it was in the heyday of the '80s action film, and then the Chuck Norris movie would come out and it'd be like, huh? So he's a cop and there's the mob and it kind of like he was more like on the level of like a Steven Seagal. That's what like it if feels you think like. of like the Steven Seagal movies, it seemed yeah. like they, like there weren't the big action, uh, you know, like uh, the expensive, explosive action movies featuring Chuck Norris yeah. that I can remember, you know, specifically. So where did that reputation, the meme reputation, come from? Then, like, that's why I don't understand. I'm think, missing something here. I think here. it's all mocking. It, that's, do you think that's what it I was going to say. Okay. Yeah. It's because the man has no personality yeah. whatsoever yeah. 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 is the reason why people invented this for him. Yeah. It's because he is, it seems like he is so just straight, bland, laced, bland, that to make up crazy things about him is what is funny. Okay, okay. Okay, now and I feel like I'm catching yeah, up to I, speed with like eight years ago. I think I, I am like too, I'm getting yes. up to, you know, like. <laughs> I agree. Did you know that uh, Chuck Norris can sit at the corner of a round table? Is this what this paper is that you have over here? This is not it mail. Is. This is Chuck oh Norris. Oh, my God. I thought it was mail bitch. Son of a bitch. He's got, he's got a crib sheet. No. Oh, my God. You know, Chuck Norris frequently donates to the Red Cross. It's just not his own blood. <laughs> I don't know what it is. You I, can't, I'm I don't, you can't deliver a joke. I'm I don't think. stupefied. I don't, I don't think right, I'll read thing. directly from here. Let's see if we got. Oh, you're oh, just going to read them. Uh, just gonna read Chuck him. Norris doesn't shower. He only takes blood baths. <laughs> okay, that one's all right. I like that. <laughs> I like that when one. nature calls, Chuck Norris hangs up. No. No. no, no, no. Well, while learning CPR, Chuck Norris actually brought the practice dummy to life. 
Okay. We got to face ourselves. A, a bit more coming. What, what is that? <laughs> Colin telling jokes? This is the best thing I've ever seen. Uh, <sighs> I mean, are you surprised? Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's something I can't look away from. It's like a car crash. <laughs> There's more coming. It's wonderful. No, it, uh, we'll, just, okay. we'll, we'll lob him in there every once in a while. So I don't know if he's got that. Just he knows he's delivering a joke, and he's he's telegraphing it with his face that he's delivering a joke, and is why it doesn't work maybe so we well. Don't make like, <laughs> right? Okay, maybe if okay, we don't look at okay, yeah. okay. D- let's don't try it. Colin, All right, don't, don't look at Colin. Colin, guys. What was going through the minds of all Chuck Norris's victims before they died? His shoe. <laughs> No, it doesn't help. It doesn't help not to look at it. That one is pretty good, though. I, I, I think it helped me. I think it helped me. I can't look at Colin if he's going to tell a joke. Yeah, Chuck Norris went skydiving and his parachute failed to open, so he took it back the next day for a refund. Oh, no, that one's terrible. Oh. That one's right. fucking terrible. Right. Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> I'll figure this out by the end of this podcast. <laughs> yeah, so this is the thing that I've never understood about Chuck Norris. I have never understood the cult of personality around no. this guy because he I has still don't. no personality. None. Listed. Like, I get, you know, like, I guess the same thing, same charges can be levied at Steven Seagal. Yes. It's these martial arts guys who come from this kind of rigid uh, training, right? And where you're supposed to suppress emotions, I think, you know, they use mm. their emotion and like their fists and their feet that they punch you with. And then, <laughs> yes, but they come across as the stoic, you know, they do the stare. Mm-hmm. Dolph Lundgren's like that, too. Very stoic. Yeah, it's true. Van Damme's not really like that. He makes goofy faces. Yeah. He has no control over his face. That's he his does. problem. That's no, true. This yeah, is a man true. who got blinded by dust and then opened his eyes to the world. <laughs> As it makes no sense. <laughs> As we recalled last summer, on the summer oh of Canyon, God. we watched Bloodsport. Oh my God. Watch that them, movie. Opened if you're his wondering. eyes as wide as he fucking As wide could. as he possibly could. Because, oh, you know, when God. you got something in your eye, you, you just, just open it. You just yeah. open as it as far as you can. I can tell you telegraph to the audience I'm blind. I'm blind. If you open your eyes as wide. I can't see. I can't even imagine Chuck Norris doing a scene like that. Right? Can't imagine it. I yeah. don't think it would ever happen. No. It's not in his contract. Yeah. But this movie, so this is why I picked this one. Because in my memory, all right, it, it plays a little differently. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure it does. I, I bet. But the bet thing that I remembered about it was I remembered three people in it. Aside, you know, well, At least there was Chuck Norris. And it's like, okay, so he's going to provide the action. But then you got Lee Marvin to provide the gravitas and the acting. Mm-hmm. And then you've got uh, Robert, Robert Forrester yeah. to do like the heavy lifting acting, right? It would appear so, yeah. Yeah. So it's like the three of them kind of in the other Chuck Norris movies, it's like Chuck Norris. And you're like, what the fuck? You mean fuck? it focuses solely on Chuck yeah. Norris? Yeah. Who has no personality. <laughs> <laughs> no charisma to speak of. Like, no. There's a lot all. of people who love Walker, Texas Ranger, though. Okay, but I feel like, Full okay, like got more charisma I, have, I have weird like childhood memories of Walker, Texas Ranger. And I think that's because it came on after Dr. Quinn Medicine Woman a lot. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and my mom watched both of those. And so, like, I have weird sense memories of both of those shows, but, like, I couldn't tell you anything about them. No, know? I only remember yeah. uh, Conan had the Walker, Texas. Oh, yeah. Lever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah the yeah, greatest yeah. thing ever. They had to have come around about the same time that the jokes uh, oh, about uh, Chuck Norris did. Yeah. 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 Young people did not watch Walker, Texas. No, I no, know. No, fact, no, nope, nope, bet, nope. I'll bet I could go up to 20 people and be like, name three Chuck Norris movies. Oh shit! I couldn't do that. And I bet they couldn't I do. I could it. name two. I bet they couldn't do <laughs> yeah. it. Two I've uh, seen. Yeah, missing in action would probably be like the first. Maybe, right? but uh, maybe. I don't think people. But that may be the most. That's got to be like well, or sidekicks, right? If you're a certain age, you're so goddamn right. right. Like sidekicks, and maybe missing. But in even action. that's or not like dog. a Chuck Norris movie. <laughs> Top <laughs> Dog is the okay. Before this movie, Top Dog was the only Chuck Norris movie I'd ever seen. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah. Well. Yeah. Let that sink in. Yeah. Yeah. His dog is a, a dog is his partner. Yeah, I don't movie, know how. So, you know? He just kept making. He just kept making movies. I guess. Yeah, but the same thing I think applies to uh, Charles Bronson, right? Like, I mean, here's another guy. He's even probably. See, we need less, to bring Charles though. Bronson to the freak show because he's another guy who's like, you, you go like, how did this guy have like a career that spanned mm. years? I mean, actually, I kind of like younger Charles Bronson over like post Death Wish yeah. Charles Bronson, where he just played the same fucking guy like I can every, see that. every yeah. single time. But he's great in like 
you know, the Dirty Dozen, the Great Escape, uh, the Great Escape, and the Magnificent Seven. I mean, those are like you know. But he's still basically the same kind of stoic, you know, guy. Mm-hmm. He just grew into like you know, yeah, immovable force as he got uh, older. Did you know Chuck Norris was in Star Wars? He was the Force. Oh God! Yikes! <laughs> Okay. So. There's going to be a lot of pauses in this show, guys. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> I do appreciate you trying to sneak them in there. I'm trying to work uh, it in. I'm running low. We're only 15 minutes in. Uh, I know there's websites devoted to it. Yeah. I have a book at home somewhere. Did you guys know that Chuck Norris broke the law once? It still isn't fixed. Dun, dun, mm. Dun. Mm. That, that may have hit a little too close to home. It doesn't fix. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> so damn it! All right. So his co-star in this movie is the great Lee Marvin. How many Lee Marvin movies have you seen? Yeah, like probably four three or five? four. What no. really? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, okay, you've seen more than I have. The big red one, right? Yep. The that's a freak show movie. We did yeah. that. Um, the oh, fuck. I just I just looked this up and I don't remember what Dirty the Dirty Dozen. Was. The Dirty Dozen. Yep, that was the other one I was thinking of. Dirty Dozen. The next mission. He's been on a lot of TV <laughs> series too. A lot of TV series, but only for like four or five episodes. Like he's never been a series regular and stuff. But he he's got like a hundred and five IMDb mm-hmm. credits. He's got a yeah, fuck he's ton like of old stuff. Old school yeah. Hollywood. Yeah. yeah. I feel like I see his name pop up everywhere. I just mm-hmm. don't retain Death it. Death Hunt. Yeah. That's with Charles Bronson. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, it is. I think he's hunting Charles Bronson or the yeah. other way around. I can't remember. Shout at the devil. Oh, Cat Baloo. I've never seen that yeah. movie, but that's the one I like that it. he got famous for. Yeah, I really like it. Iceman like Cometh? Oh, yeah, Donovan's yep. Reef, the John Wayne movie. Yep. Oh, Donovan's yeah. Reef! Yeah. That's, yeah. that's one of them I know. Okay. Yeah, I yeah. think Cat Baloo was my first exposure to him. Three dozen professionals. So I wonder if at some point, like, uh, the Gol- Golan Globus, like, loved... You know, movies like Dirty Dozen and Magnificent Seven so much because Robert Vaughn from The Magnificent Seven is in this movie. Is in this movie, yep. (laughs) He was very lately credited, too. Like, his credit was way down on that list. Oh, The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love that movie, actually. Mm -hmm. And the Comancheros. Yep. Yeah. It's also interesting to me when, like, Lee Marvin does these war movies because, you know, he's in some kind of military thing because he actually was in World War II. I believe it. He oh, wow. was injured, uh, I believe, uh, was it Iwo Jima? He was in the Pacific, and like most of his unit was shot. He was injured and had to, uh, you know, he was discharged. Um, and he tells this story. I saw like him on a Tonight Show or something once where he was talking about like one time that he was in like, you know, some uh, horrible, you know, uh, firefight. And, like, guys are dying, and this one guy in, from his unit, like, came up and, like, was pulling guys out, like, from the line of fire or whatever. And he's like, you know who that guy was? And it's like, that guy came back to, to America. Now he's Captain Kangaroo. Like, what? <laughs> wow. He's like, yeah, that guy, you know, Captain Kangaroo Children's, you know, was Damn. like a fucking war mm-hmm. hero. In World- <laughs> yeah, <laughs> World War crazy. Yeah. yeah. So that guy actually saw some some shit, which is kind of like, Jesus. and you're putting him in this movie where he's like in the, you know, the Delta Force, right? It's like. That's because uh, they made men differently back then, Colin. You I could guess. put him in that and he'd be fine. He yeah. not feel any flash. But this is. I'm, I'm well, you know, when Chuck joking. Norris was born, the doctor said, it's a man. <sighs> I will leave. <laughs> <laughs> just, you know, just gonna put that out there. It's been a long week, I, Carol. I, I, I will leave. Right. <laughs> uh, it's a man. <laughs> yep. Now you get it. Now it's sinking in. Uh, no, I got You're it the good. first time. I'm just, it, you know, uh, the that's a uh, you know yeah. the way homers. Yeah. <laughs> um. So this movie is basically it's two hours long and why? No, it's over two it's hours. Two is hours, two and, hours nine and nine minutes. Two hours and nine minutes. Okay. We looked. No, it Chuck might as Norris well be four hours ever and be nine this minutes. long. So this is the epic Chuck Norris movie. Is it? This is the one where where Menachem Golan went like all in because he apparently had uh, free reign of the Israeli Air Force. And you man, he it. loves those fucking planes because he yeah. shoots those planes doing all like at the end when the plane's coming down, it's got the fighter escort. I'm like, yeah, how do you make that happen? Got to be a big time Canon film producer. I guess I guess. So. But the uh, it's like kind of almost split in half. There's the first half, which I would is, say in thirds <laughs> In thirds. OK, what are the thirds? Sure, sure. The plane third. The the ground Delta Force third, mm. and then the final shootout third. 
the action third. Yeah, the action, the ac- third. action third, yeah. The interesting yeah, yeah. third, we'll call the interesting, it. interesting, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, maybe should we attack these by thirds? Sure. All right. I mean, You want to start whatever. at the beginning or the end? <laughs> well, no, the beginning. <laughs> we have to lead up to something. Okay. We can't start with the with a bang and then just be like, and then there was a, a drama for the first Yeah, no, we had to wait. 45 minutes. No, we had to sit through the lead up. Our listeners can sit through the lead up. Okay. <laughs> There's like three different movies happening yeah. here, you know? Yeah. I just want to say that uh, Roger Ebert gave this movie three stars back in 1985. It was three and a half. He was on Coke. Oh, shit. Yeah. He might have been. Okay, but there might have been a reason it was the 80s. for that. But uh, here's. <laughs> wait, Roger Ebert or. Chuck Norris and Lee Roger Marvin. Ebert. Okay. <laughs> I, I mean, know. he was a heavy drinker. That's for damn sure. Uh, yeah, Ebert, true. if nothing was else, this before or after he cleaned up his act, I don't know. 80, I it was this is what eighty five. This is uh, eighty six. Eighty six yeah. might be before, but he did it pretty early. I think he cleaned up. Patrick yeah, Bateman is like doing coke in his prime at this point in Hollywood life. So, mm. yeah, you know, take what you will of that. But yes, the first third. So the, the first dramatic. third, yeah, is, and this is where I was like, when the movie, because st- again, you know, uh, my memory of the movie is more of the th- the last third. Of course When you is. watch the so trailer, when you're you reminded of like, oh yeah, The trailer is the last third of this and, movie. Uh, yeah. Cur- yeah, it is. And curious, at what point did you buy the Blu-ray, Colin? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Colin bought this for like $4. Yeah. By the way, I, I noticed the stickers on the inside. He bought this for like $4. Yeah. I will say... Because I know, saw it on NBC way back in the day and was like, this is actually pretty good. Because by the time you get to the end of it, you're like, There's, uh, you know, you don't remember the first right. thing. You stuck with TV, it that long? Yeah, but they may have cut but it. But on TV, good. that last part lasts at least an hour and a half. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The good part yeah. between commercial breaks and everything. It it's got to. It. I yeah. will say that the, the the first thing I noticed off the bat about this movie that's not on the DVD cover, but on the version we watched is like... The logo type they have for the Delta Force is different than what we're looking at on the DV- on the Blu-ray r- right now, but it's it's actually really nice, really well done. And I was <laughs> like, good for them. Like it's got like a yeah, it's a nice like slanted Italian type with like mm-hmm. a big stroke around it. Yeah, it looks really good. Oh, the so, logo in the movie. Yeah, yeah. The, the movie yeah, logo yeah, was yeah. really nice. Oh, yeah. yeah, it looked yeah. really good. Which like for they Canon, have that it was like, on. yay, you put money into this, you know? Like their over the top logo yeah. looks pretty awesome. Yeah. The over the top, yeah, that one was good. I'm probably Bloodsport, the same guy. Mm, was not so great. Breaking was all right. How would you describe the cover of the Blu-ray? Um, inaccurate. <laughs> what are you talking about? It's got it's, Chuck, it Norris Chuck Norris glaring uh, off uh, camera. An explosion is happening. There is an American flag. Yep, <laughs> yep and he does have the kind American of flag on his fifty percent opacity. Way. That's very true. I never noticed this. Mm-hmm. Now that you I. mention it, I realize it's. And it it, feels once like it's you a, notice it, it will bother you like, for oh. forever. You're saying this is the stolen valor thing. The, yes. The, the fact that everybody in this movie wears their flags on the wrong shoulder or yes. upside. Yeah. Holly, would you care to explain this? You know more about this. Um, I'm wasted, but I'll try. Um, yeah. No. Um, in this movie, they're wearing it on their right shoulder, and in, in f- right. Yeah. yeah. In fact, it should be on their left shoulder. Facing the other direction towards the emergency that they are responding to because it is an emergency responder um, or first responder uh, uh, tradition on all uniforms like police, fire, military. Basically, yeah. the flag should look backwards because it look like exactly. it should look like you're running into the danger, and yeah. like basically, it would, should look how like if you're carrying a flag, it would the wind yeah. would blow it back, so the, uh, the flag would okay. look backwards. Gotcha. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, that makes whereas, sense. I'm like, how do you know which way is the front? But look, if you can see on the cover here, way. it's right side up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. which if you're which, running that way, the flag does. Which yeah. if you've heard of stolen valor, like a lot of the people that fake being in the military, they will have their flag facing the wrong way because mm-hmm. they don't know that. And that's right. a really easy way to identify stolen valor. Exactly. And literally everyone in this movie has the stolen valor flag position. That's why I yep. wonder, like, was this a, mis- a colossal mistake on the part of the production? Or is that on purpose to not uh, disrespect actual uh, Since they didn't military? Get permission. It could be bo- I think it's a little bit of both. Yeah. I think, uh, I think it's... Especially, like, Lee Marvin would know. Right. Yeah. You, exactly. yeah, yeah. Right. So that's why I wonder if it was like because he's the one who's doing it all the time putting the yeah, the and they're just on. like let's zoom in on that. There's he's literally like, a shot of him guys, putting, so putting one putting on his. On yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe they don't want to be as possible. That. That's yeah, a good explanation though because I never would have thought of that mm-hmm. because like you know going back to what Revolutionary War, Civil War, and everything, you're running into battle, you got a flag guy mm-hmm. who's mm-hmm. holding the line up there. And no, I had to way. have it explained to me that way to understand it. Like it had to be explained to me as like if you're running into battle, the wind is going to blow your flag backwards. You know, that's how. Yeah, that's how. Was explained to me. You know, I was like yeah. five, and my dad told me. Mm-hmm. He was yeah, a yeah that makes perfect sense. 
but I understand why in a movie, like, it's a movie. You know, you right. might not need to maintain that accuracy. But if you know it's something you're supposed to look yeah. for, it stands out to you, you right. know? Yeah. Or maybe every actor in this movie, their right side was their good side. <laughs> that's, it's possible. That's as simple as that. They're just like, yeah, yeah do it on the side. Sorry. <laughs> well, the first third that we're talking about is a hostage drama. There's mm-hmm. very little Chuck Norris and very little Lee Marvin in it. And it stars uh, a galaxy of Hollywood superstars. Superstars? These people were always seen in like the the Irwin Allen disaster movies of like the 70s. Like uh, the Poseidon Adventure or Avalanche, Avalanche. Or Airport, Earthquake. And Towering Inferno, and Earthquake. Yeah, I don't Earthquake. know. Like George Kennedy might have been, but you got yeah. George yeah. Kennedy. Yeah, George got... Kennedy was an airport. Was he? Yeah. Okay. I feel so, like he was in Avalanche too. Yeah. I'm pretty sure he was yeah. in Avalanche. And I know Shelley Winters was in Poseidon Adventure. You know who's missing? Ernest Borgnine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Totally is. <laughs> but we got Martin Balsam instead. And uh, am I missing one other person? The there lady was, from my big yeah, the mom wedding. from my big factory yep. wedding. Yep. <laughs> He's in this. And the name pilot is. is Bo Svensson, who was Walking Tall. I think after Joe Don oh, Baker yeah? did it, I think Bo Svensson did two of them. He was in the original Inglorious oh, Bastards. He's Bo Svensson. Okay. And he's in Inglorious Bastards in the movie reel, I believe. Oh, is he? Yeah. Mm. Oh. Bo Svensson. Still around. So he's a dude because it's. It felt like the way they kept going back to him. It's yeah, like that's a was, dude. Like he's, a, he's a thing, yeah, right? Movie star. Because he's just like waiting to get his line in that movie. <laughs> I feel like if you were in an actual like emergency situation, George Kennedy would be a calming presence. I'd like him there. Right. He seems very nervous. I mean, no. he's always shaking. Well, no, I, I mean, feel he was, like he'd he be was calming. saying goodbye to like a, he was, a dead young man. Yeah. yeah, and he was. You know, he like stood up and was like, "I'm a Jew too because we stand together." Because mm-hmm. Jesus was a Jew and all that, I think he'd be, I think he'd be calming. Well, there you go. I mean, yeah. you know, we gotta call him up and oh, he's not around anymore. Oh, uh, sad. But- <laughs> <laughs> oh, nobody's around anymore. Chuck Norris is the last living member of this movie. <clears throat> he's awesome. Robert in Forrester's the Naked Gun yet. movies, which we can't watch anymore because O.J. Simpson's in. But uh, I don't care. I love uh, I'm that, still watching. I'm, I'm sorry. Still are we not? It. Is that a rule? So I love I'm Naked still Gun. watching them. Those movies are fucking hilarious. I think still if, if anything, it makes him funnier. She had two sets of knees. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like him being in them makes it funnier, honestly. Like, I really uh, think it kind of ups the wackiness of it. Yeah. I Hunter love this alert. movie. <laughs> <laughs> they are really good. Yep. Uh, so, the hostage trauma. Yes, the hostage trauma. So, this is. Um, Uncomfortable. Obviously, pre 9 11. Because. Um, they use guns and are able to manipulate like hundreds of people with two small guns, which in 2018, I don't feel like would happen. Mm. Um, and like the people are just like, I remember my dad telling me like when 9-11 happened that like pre 9-11, like it was very common for people to like hijack planes and just drive them to a different destination and let everybody off and it'd be fine. Mm-hmm. So that's why everyone on 9-11 yeah. went with it yeah, they because figured they it, figured yeah. that was mm-hmm. that's what would happen. Mm. And um, so like watching this movie and thinking about that, I was like, I get why they just went with it because they just thought, oh, we'll go to a different destination, but mm-hmm. we'll be fine. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Interesting. I yep. did not yeah. know that. Mm-hmm. And, and, and like if you think about it that way, the passengers definitely have a very pre-9-11 mindset. Very, yeah. Even, they even, know if even you the guys just do what you're told eventually. Yeah, it's, it'll yeah. be fine. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Just just follow instructions and just do what they want, mm-hmm. which they weren't yeah. very good at. Right. Yeah. Even the guys in the tower were like, "Damn it, it's a hijack!" Mm, yeah. yeah. Really quick, and they're just they like, "Oh shit, this is something that happens all the time." It's yeah. like, "Oh, not again!" All right, so I'm going to give you a little historical perspective <laughs> on this movie that may blow your mind. I don't know. <laughs> historical. <laughs> historical. <laughs> Have you ever heard of the hijacking of TWA flight uh, 847? Yes. Yes. Okay. And it was uh, a, an American flight that was hijacked, that was taken to Beirut, that uh, happened in June of 1985. Oh, wow. The huh. Delta Force came out in February of 1986. Let's monopolize. Let's get on this is tragedy. The story of flight 847. I, yeah. Like, At least for the first act, right? Yeah, for the first act. Yeah, well, yeah because there was <laughs> yeah. no Delta Force. This yeah. is no. like the the Hollywood uh what is it Hollywood? It's the flight what like what is was it, it flight yeah. 97 or whatever when they did the movie oh, yeah, of yeah. the 911 plane, right? 93. Yeah, you flight, know, flight 93, yeah, United, but that 93. one United that United. one was yeah. like just dramatizing straight like what happened yeah. on that, you know. But this is like if you took that story 
and injected Chuck Norris into it. Yes. You know, it's like because it didn't end well, because I think those hijackers from 847 were never mm-hmm. caught. Like they're most of them are still at large. It was Hezbollah, I think, like took over the uh, plane. But, but the American um, uh, uh, SEAL going to the tarmac, that's that happened. Um, you know, the guy with the gun out the window, the a pilot that's a famous shot that yeah. happened like all of that like this is a straight up dramatization of all of the events of that stuff which was interesting while we were watching the movie night and i'm listening to you guys like going like oh they're doing this and they're coming back and i'm sitting there going like it's interesting that like they're they're doing to the audience of 1986 this right. was dramatizing the story that they had heard on the news right. the year mm-hmm. before just recently so right. this is like what happened beat by beat through, you know. Mm-hmm. But for the audience of now, yeah, right this is a context. Chuck Norris movie. <laughs> the audience of now, we're just thinking, why are they not acting? Because, why like, why, why because is this not all, more a Chuck Norris movie? Because yeah. we, because like. Do we know post, what a Chuck Norris movie is? In a post 9-11 world, we act on any slight indiscretion. Like any slight indiscretion on a plane, we react. That's mm. just how we are in a post 9-11 world. Like, you know, some guy tries to light a shoe bomb on fire and, you know, we all jump up and tie yeah. him down with belts, you know? Yeah. Some lady tries to open, open the fucking, the, the open the fucking door. door. Yeah, yeah we tire her down. Yeah. down. We like, react constantly. Mm-hmm. So, like, in a post 9-11 world, to watch a movie pre-9-11 where no one is reacting, it's like, why is no one reacting? Yeah, we can't you know? watch yeah. movies like this appropriately anymore. We, no, like, no, this is not a can't. thing that modern audiences can remotely understand, understand. understand. yeah it's yeah. not a thing mm-hmm. well, i guess that's why it's a uh, you, know, you hear product of their time or whatever it's like so it's kinda, much yeah which there's nothing wrong with that it's just it's no. just a different viewing experience but there's all it is. Yeah. there's certain things that will shift i mean not like 9-11 but yeah. it will shift the view the consciousness what have you so much mm-hmm. that to go back to something like this where this happens it's very weird mm. to watch Especially because there's a woman constantly saying there's hundreds of us and there's two of you. Like, there's a character constantly saying that. And, like, at at the point in time that this movie takes place, like, that means nothing to all those other people. But mm-hmm. to us watching it in, like, 2018, we're like, she's right. That, just yeah. listen I'm like, yeah. to her. Listen to her. Like, yeah. You can you know? all just grab yeah. this dude and you'd yeah. be yeah. fine and right be now. Fine. Yeah. Yeah, we're can, we're all jumping out of our seat, being like, "She's right!" Like, yeah, listen, get him. To, yeah. listen to Shelley Winters, goddamn it! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, us people in the future know she's right. Yeah, there's you know? sometimes like, when he's him. like, he's yeah. the dude with the gun is moving people down the aisle, and he like sets the gun in his yeah. arm. But yeah. he never and I'm just like, just grab it. the gun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <sighs> I know it's kind of interesting to like look back and, and see it through that those yeah, yeah. because then, they were programmed to think that like if, and, if you do what you're told you will live right you'll be and fine. then when they Eventually. point out the fact that there are three members of the United States Navy on the plane yeah how is nothing done mm-hmm. how no. Oh I my think god! It was the self preservation or whatever. It's like just you know. But yeah, isn't it like, isn't it their call to it's duty their to do? Isn't it literally <laughs> their job to do something? Yes. It sure is. Yeah. Well, well. I don't know what the attitude or what the the what the training, what the mantra, what the, what anything yeah. was back the then. Like what has are you changed? Endangering other people, right? Or, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Um, oh. But uh, Robert Forrester plays a uh, Arabian Arabian. I don't know where he's supposed to be from. He's uh, not with indeterminate. He's, yeah. But they yeah. they specifically don't give him a political affiliation. He's with the New World uh, Revolution. 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 Yes. And so he comes in and takes over. <clears throat> and then uh, with the idea of, uh, you know, they're eventually going to bring um, a whole shitload of terrorists on once they land. I think yeah. this actually happened. They brought in like a whole bunch of other uh, uh, terrorists because it was just two guys actually took the plane over. Yeah. But you get all these like uh, it's the 70s, you know, disaster movie kind of uh, um, vignettes where you get to meet like all the characters individually. Yeah. Mm-hmm. As they're coming together. Yeah. But, you know, you, and they're, they're all designed to evoke some kind of sympathy response. I mean, the little girl who just bought the Cabbage Patch Kid, you know, it's like, you know, I just want to come back and get my kid. Don't hurt my daddy. You know, you've got the uh, the elderly Jewish couple that, uh, you know, have the, um, the oh, yeah, concentration. The tattoos, yeah. 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 Tattoos and all that. So it's like, <clears throat> you know, going heavy on the... Know, is it the schmaltz? What do you call that? It's not. Schmaltz. But was it schmaltz? It's I was schmaltz. Gonna say, it's, it's, um, it's the. It's it's going. It's pulling at the string. It's it's but, going for the obvious stuff. But very heavy handed. Heavy handed, right? Yeah. yeah. 
and what the I don't know what the attitude in 1985 like. I try to think like what is what were they trying to do in 1985 versus how it comes across today. I don't think it doesn't seem like it changes it probably, that much. It probably worked the exact same. Probably you know? <laughs> like it you, just said very heavy handed back yeah, then. It's like this is not like an A picture. It's a B picture, right? Yeah. So it's like, but you're taking and trivializing in some ways a real life legitimate thing, uh-huh. and then adding this action movie, like injecting the the Chuck Norris action movie into it, yeah. which is maybe why, you know, when you guys are sitting there watching it, it's like it was kind of like this uneven experience. Yeah. You know? <clears throat> it was, <laughs> oh, especially for, uh, what was the, uh, I'm going to call her a stewardess because that is, I'm guessing, what they were still called back then. Probably. Stewardesses. Stews. Uh, the blonde one, she's like, don't you see? I'm German. I yeah. can't do. <laughs> Go yeah, I can't pull out the Jews. Yeah. Don't like, you remember that? Yeah. Like that whole thing was, uh, according to these characters, still very prevalent in the mm-hmm. in the consciousness, in the guilt of of people that come from that country. Still a whole big thing mm-hmm. going on then. Some forty years later. I mean, I, I'm not. Well, I it mean, should be. I, I, realistically, if someone right now were in a terrorist situation and they were like, "Hey." Go pick out all the Jewish people, and that person was German. They'd probably be a little nervous yeah, about that. Yeah, probably, yeah. I, I yeah. think that would Especially still happen. Works, yeah. Yeah. Especially yeah. if they were, I think if that they would were still like, happen. like, yeah, German. Yeah, yeah, like, we're not far enough like, away from that. No, to, yeah. to yeah, no. no, feel that way. Yeah. No, yeah, it was only fifty years in nineteen eighty-five, right? Yeah. yeah. It's it's still not far enough now yeah. to feel okay no. about it. Yeah. No, not with the well, no, no. It's one of those moments no. where you know you're on one side of it, or you know in history, and, or the, the afterwards. Right. Yeah. Well, and shit that keeps going on today keeps bringing it closer. Like mm. it, it doesn't, it doesn't have the opportunity yeah, to get away like, from us. We're not moving like, away from no. no. It, just, it keeps getting brought it, back to us. It's even more prevalent now. Honestly, yeah. Mm. So the uh, but the other interesting thing about this is like you've got an Ar- Israeli filmmaker like Menachem Golan is like a you know mm-hmm. I mean I don't know if he was Israeli American I assume at some I point he took citizenship so. but he's making this movie where you know uh, he's got well they're not again they're not of any specific nationality yeah, they're not down. But clearly a Middle Eastern at the yeah, same time. Right. You and know. not even and played by Robert Forrester. Well, and, right. the main yeah. guy, yeah. Which is the weird because the rest of them seem like they're, they're Arabian. Right. Or, yes. Uh, Middle and, Eastern uh, of some sort. Yes. Well, and, the, and the whole thing was, you know, when all this is over, you're going to meet the Ayatollah and he's going to congratulate you. Yeah. So yeah. there was def- a definite comment on that. Because I think the Iran hostage crisis yes. was yeah. uh, several, was that late 70s, early 80s mm-hmm. that that had happened. But I guess what I was going for there is like even in those moments where he's giving all this like, you know, the the, the pulling at the heartstrings, the, you know, of the plight of the uh, passengers, mm. he's not, I mean, he's demonizing the the Arab terrorists, but also trying to give them like these shades of humanity. A little Did bit. You see, like with the guy who bit. cares for the pregnant woman and everything. Yeah, yeah. Like, which came out of nowhere. That's, that's exactly right. The because thing is, before it, that, they didn't give a shit about her. Exactly. He's he's making these moments happen, but they make no fucking sense. Because before that, it's literally called out. Like someone literally points to her and says that she's pregnant, and the guy was like, "Oh, fuck, basically, fuck you." Is yeah, like deal with says, it, right? You yeah. know, <laughs> yeah. Know, but I then think. later on, when it's convenient to the plot, he he cares about her you know I just, just don't a think moment of downtime where it's like okay now we can you know try to balance out you know we're not saying that yeah you know, everybody's a hundred percent evil yeah you know here's they they're people too so they're complicated I don't know I mean, again this is a B movie kind of doing this with a big uh, trowel <laughs> something which should be painted with a delicate brush sure that <laughs> is a really good way to explain <laughs> right, it, with Chuck Norris yeah. waiting in the wings <laughs> mm-hmm. not with the delicacy it, it should have yeah exactly mm-hmm. yeah, that's a good way of describing yeah it. but this leads us into our second half of the movie because Chuck Norris is not delicate it does not uh, the whole thing that, well uh, uh, oh, uh, Jesus. Uh, Jesus. oh Jesus. no did you know that did I do this one already uh, Chuck Norris ordered a Big Mac at Burger King and he got one Oh, because it's McDonald's. Uh, Got it. Yep. Uh, sure. He can have you know, whatever he sure. wants. You know, Chuck Norris knows Victoria's Secret. So the second half of this movie. You said that like <laughs> Victoria's Secret is a first and last name person. Yeah. That's how you said that joke. Okay. Like they Not dated. her secret. Like they casually okay. dated. But he knows this is Mrs. Secret. Oh, uh, he, he knows, knows her, her secret. Knows? We got it. Okay, well, we, no, we got it. 
Um, do one more, just for the fuck of it. Yeah, yeah why not? Uh, just, why not? just keep sure. going. You know, Chuck Norris uses ribbed condoms inside out, so he gets the pleasure. <laughs> well, that's just selfish. <laughs> yeah. that, that's, that's not a problem. I don't like that one. Yeah. So, <laughs> so dumb. <coughs> oh, my God. So the second half of this movie, burn they bring shit. the hostages off the plane. Some of them, they put them in Beirut. This whole thing yeah. is actually filmed in uh, in Israel. But they they shot, or they so they put him in a, a dungeon in Beirut, and then there's other mm. hostages like on the plane. And this is where the Delta Force has to try and make their uh, scope it out. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> that sounds exactly yes. Is my mm. thoughts. Yes, on yes, that. Holly. Please elaborate on that. I don't wanna. <laughs> <laughs> So Wait, is this the first time? Is this when they're uh, when they're they all drive up dressed as like the the tour- maintenance tech and all that stuff in the van? And everything I think and they're that waiting. Happens, yeah. That's oh, is this when they practice? Is that when oh that, dear that lord, what the fuck was when that? The training montage. Well, I okay, well, montage is generous the, because you're in the middle scene. of a terror situation. You're right. gonna have a couple drills. Way to break the whole sense okay. of urgency that this movie is moving right. forward. Then by stopping it and doing training exercises for these people. Yeah. Oh boy! Well, Lee what, Marvin why? checks the why. Watch I don't it. know. Uh, why is a, my okay? Why is my question to this movie in general like why? Why, why is this movie two hours long? And we could have just cut this <laughs> fucking training thing out. Oh, this yeah. movie could have been twenty minutes long. Let's oh. be real. Like this could have been a short. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, uh, I don't definitely think could have been, been shorter. I think he could shorten it for sure and like twenty minutes speed up the out. pace quite a bit. But mm. I don't know. Plane hijack. I think he could take he at least twenty in, minutes out. Takes of it. it over. You take thirty Boom, minutes done. out of this movie. Yeah, but there is a failed attempt at an action scene. A failed you attempt have to be more at action. There's a couple. Yeah. There's, There's a couple. Which, which one, where, Colin? Where they try to uh, take the plane. Yeah, but uh, the terror they don't know that the terrorists are on board. I think that's where Lee Marvin delivers his line oh, right. of the movie. Oh, yeah. Which, what was it? Take him down or something like that. Where yeah, you, where take you? him down. Take him down. I think it's which like we that. can't, I can't even do a Lee Marvin impression. He's got yeah. that voice, which works. But yeah, he does that. And then right, they boys, don't realize it's time there's... to go. Take him down. <laughs> that's better. Even right. if you did a spot on Lee Marvin impression, no one would know. No one would know. No, no one would know you were doing Lee. That's very true. No one would know you're doing Lee you're like, Marvin. You're like, but it's Lee Paint Marvin, obviously. No. There no one was knows. that bit on The Simpsons where they had the musical Paint Your Wagon. And Lee I remember Marvin that. Was singing. Okay. I remember that. Uh, but did they point out it was Lee Marvin oh, first? Yeah. Well, yeah. There you go. Yeah. Um, you have to know. <laughs> See, they can do that. So there's a bunch of skullduggery. This is like the the, the the weakest part of the movie. I mean, that's I mean that's, that's debatable. Up in the air, debatable. You know? But you're saying that's... that the first half is is slow, but it is kind of like no, no, it works. It's oh, let's, dr- it's okay, I would say it works. I would say I was invested in the first half. It's if after that it lost it broke me. The yeah, spell yeah. The, yeah, yeah. It, well, because then I don't know. It feels it's funny that we've divided this into thirds because it doesn't feel it like could be they've like fifths. It, you know? could, it really could be, but it doesn't feel like they've decided specifically one thing this movie is going to be and go for it. They want this. We've got like a hard drama at the beginning of this movie, which I'm for, but it was not what I was expecting. But they didn't carry it through. That's and the they problem. Don't, yeah, right, yeah. They don't carry it through. All those characters get, once they get put in prison, they're out they're, of the fucking they're, that's movie. That's it, right? yeah. yeah. And so then we we're get just, to invest in all these people, then it's like, let's leave them alone and go find out what Chuck Norris and Lee Marvin are doing. There's like a shift. Yeah, which is it shifts dull. gears too many times. That's yeah. the problem. You know. It's, well, I don't know. I wonder, did it, because I guess you're saying it didn't feel like a natural transition, but I think that's what that second uh, third is for, is to, you know, turn the the wheel from the hostage drama toward the, the uh-huh. out of unbelievable Chuck Norris uh, uh, action but fest. But Chuck Norris isn't in that first third of the movie. Right. That's the problem. That's and, the biggest fucking problem with this movie. Yeah. And if we're gonna like build up Chuck I, I would understand it more if they were trying to like build up Chuck Norris for the last third of this movie. But, but then they, they should have. They weren't. They should have just focused more on like Chuck Norris, like him getting ready versus him training. It's his not team. his movie. Let's be real. It's not, this his, is not movie. his movie. I don't feel like it is. No, he's on screen for what? That's why I minutes, like it. Maybe because <laughs> he's barely in it. Yeah, yeah. it. Let's put it this way: it's not his movie, but it would not help it at all if he was in it more. 
That's, I can't imagine. That's debatable. I don't know. Well, because where he dry is, and we, boring where, as where he, is. he is is the, where the action is, and that's the mm, point. There's that, more action there. That's yes. what you're looking for. Here's the problem. But when they when they start off with the, the terrorist hijack of the plane in the beginning, maybe this is our prob our problem personally maybe. because we are a modern movie audience. But we immediately went to a Dark Knight Rises kind of place of like, ooh, Chuck Norris is immediately going to bust in in this first act in this plane hijack and kind of like fuck shit up. That's yeah. not going to happen. I no. think maybe that, that does was, not happen. But no. that's my fault for bringing this movie to the Saturday night. <laughs> no, I, I feel like, like I said, like, I feel like that's a modern a, movie. Yeah, it's going to be a Chuck uh, Norris. Well, of what you know, yeah, what Chuck yeah, Norris yeah. is like this is going to be ridiculous think, and fun action. It's going to be like Invasion USA yeah. or something. I think we uh, just all realize that we don't know what Chuck Norris means. <laughs> yeah, what, exactly. We, I think that I, was the realization yeah. we got. Was like oh, we don't know what we're. I said Chuck Norris, and we all got excited. We all had an image in our minds, which is not Chuck Norris at all. I thought he was going to like board the plane in midair and uh, oh yeah, my like, God. I like wanted the executive opening act decision. of the Dark Knight Rises. Yes, I wanted executive yeah. decision. I wanted executive yes. decision. That's what I wanted You're in this movie. You're so fucking right. I'm yeah. gonna go home and watch executive oh, decision. Oh or even the cold open of the Dark Knight Rises. Yeah, you know, exactly. Where, well, yeah, it's, where, which you know. is basically the same thing. Yeah, yeah. 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 I like, want that plane to plane boarding yeah. process. Yeah. That's, that's out of the budget yeah. of a Chuck Norris. Yes, that's a James Bond experience. No, I want Bane slash Chuck Norris propelling down and hanging into a plane. I want Bane Norris. I want Bane Norris. Yeah. <laughs> I want Bane Norris. That's what I want. Mm. Actually, Bane. actually, could we just but, have but Tom Hardy? I don't think, I don't think why? we can deliver that movie, though. I don't think it was ever made. No. <laughs> but why spend mm. all the time in the cabin of this plane if it doesn't really mean anything to the third act? You know what I'm saying? Like, we spent the whole first act of this movie in the cabin of that plane. Getting it's, to know these people that did for not no matter. Reason. It for did no not reason. matter. Yeah. It's, uh, it's underscoring the heinousness of the... It's So, I think this is... Well, okay, this is the way I take it. Maybe I'm wrong. But it is, in some way, I think, supposed to build in you a hatred for the uh, Robert Forrester character mm -hmm. and his accomplices. So when the American whoop-ass happens in the third act, you are ready for blood. Your blood's up, and you're like, fucking get that man, Chuck Norris. I mean, I bless you. I was. Yeah. So it, that's why. But, I, it's, I, like, I, but it's because you were waiting so long until finally it was like, bah, we're just going to fucking... Blast you with my rocket bike that farts <laughs> the explosion with his rocket motorcycle. We're gonna repel down shit, shooting Uzis. Oh my and, yeah. god! I mean, explosion buildings blowing up. Maybe so. Maybe it wasn't uh, story wise, but maybe it was just like movie wise. You know what I mean? Like just waiting for those action beats. Mm. That's mm. what I, maybe that's what it felt like. You know, I need more of a your. Hunter from the Future Your treatment you of know, this movie. Keep bringing it up. Oh. Yeah. Keep bringing it but up. But like, okay, at least <laughs> you your... borrow it. I do. I, I would, would like to borrow it. it. I would oh, like you weren't here for your. I, I was about sick. That. I had the flu. <laughs> Holly, Holly, you watch would love it. it. You should I watch your. I want to borrow it. it. Yeah, right. um, you should watch your. But at least your like set our expectations reasonable. Like he was fr he was in the opening scene of that movie, and from the get go we followed him, mm -hmm. and that's what yeah, this movie should have been. Granted, Chuck Norris was in the opening of this movie, but it was a different movie. Yeah, yeah it was, it was in a those different five movie. minutes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, right. That's yeah. It. I yeah. forgot about that opening. He saves, he saves the, the guy. Dude. Yeah, There's an explosion like right in the first thirty seconds. A helicopter explodes. He saves yeah. uh, old Butch or whatever. Yeah, and I, was, and I was in. I was like, yeah, let's do this. And it's very slow she, moving. It is yeah. a very slow action it is. sequence. But the fact that there was an explosion after the title, like, yeah. I was in. Yeah. And then I was out. But, but I actually very quickly. honestly forgot about that because this because, movie is yeah. so goddamn long. I because, forgot yeah. about that. Yeah. So long. <laughs> but the third section of this movie, when it actually does become the whoop ass movie, the rah rah, you know, the American flags flying, where, you know, right. Navy SEALs are going in, they're blowing up shit. Chuck Norris has a bunch of opportunities for one liners that he can't deliver at no. all. Did he even try? Yeah. I said, yeah, I think he said, what was uh, the best one? Good night, sucker. Um, and it wasn't good. Oh, like, the guy was, he shot under the yeah, bed. Yeah, the guy he shot under oh, the when, bed. Oh, uh, when when uh, he shot the sweet dreams when like the like guy was on the radio, he's like, "Do you hear me, American?" And then he shoots loud the radio. He's like, "Loud and clear." But it's not. Yeah. But that you're putting more emphasis into it. His is just. Oh, a, I did. Yeah. Oh, I did it better, fuckers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's it. There's something I just. He I, makes Stallone look so good. He yeah. makes everyone else yeah. look you know? great. Yeah. He makes yeah. Stallone look incredible. Oh yeah. Except, except Seagal. Am I right? I mean. Yeah. Seagal. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, I mean. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. But like. <laughs> but it's Stallone. So yeah. I like Seagal more than. <laughs> I, no. Like Seagal's got something going for seriously, him. Seriously, I've I've yeah, seen. Yeah, yeah, I've seen a lot. Of, I've seen a lot of Seagal movies, and they're much more fucking entertaining than this. But the man, I'm saying. Like the emphasis they put into it. He may not have much, but he's got more. Yeah. 
He, St- Stallone no. gives it his Seagal all. Seagal at least makes me laugh Unless sometimes. Stallone's got the... Uh, oh, yeah. He's got yeah. that. He's got Seagal the, makes I think yeah. Stallone yeah. is an underrated actor. I, I would agree. Stallone, Stallone did not oh, yell okay. very much in Over the Top. He should no, have yelled more. You did more, a lot but, of mumbling in but Over of the Top. Those, I love it. Of love those it. 80s yeah. tough guy action yeah. heroes, it's like Stallone, I think, like especially as time goes best. on, he is... By far, by far, the best guy you know of them. I all. agree. By yeah. far, for sure. Agreed. <clears throat> Agreed. Definitely. I'll watch him in anything. Put him in anything. I'll watch it. I'll watch Rhinestone. Dare me to bring Rhinestone to the free <laughs> no, show. No, I'll no, no, show no. you. I you shut your dirty Don't mouth. <laughs> I am not taking you up on that. <laughs> Uh, Stop it. Listeners, no. if you want to wa- want to hear it. the rest of the right, free show, watch Rhinestone. First. Cliffhanger first, then Rhinestone, please. Oh, I'm in for Let's some at least get cliffhanger. I'm in for some I'm cliffhanger. I'm down for cliffhanger. Let's yeah, do it. Yeah, we should probably do cliffhanger. Yeah, we should shit. do it. Yeah. Mm, I'm going to be changing my pick for next John week. John Lithgow oh, is in boy. it. Don't let me Lith- down. Oh, Lithgow's I love so John Lithgow. Yeah. Don't let me down, Sean. Wait, what yeah. was your pick going to be for next week? Are you, I, we're not there yet. We're going to find out. Yeah. Hey, did you know that uh, some magicians oh. can walk on water, but Chuck Norris can swim through land? Uh, that's, that's not a good one. Okay. No, no, that's not a good um, one. Uh. So in the end, we are treated to Chuck Norris running around with his uh, modified Suzuki, which uh, this is where, like, you know, because the movie, it's the schizophrenic nature of the movie, right? Where you have, like, the... The opening hostage drama where Robert Forrester's performance, I think, is actually so strong as the take charge. You know, he's legitimately frightening, I think, as a, no, I, as I, a character. I think the I think the terrorists did a fantastic job. Yeah, I, think even I, the, even I thought though, all of them did. Yeah. Even the one. OK, granted, this is a super local deep cut reference, but the people who get it will get it. One of the terrorists was dressed exactly like Rocky Rococo. He was the pizza franchise. Yes. He was. That was Robert Forrester from yeah. Jackie Brown. Yeah. yeah. He yeah. literally like had the same white, yeah. no, white he, and red outfit as Rocky Rococo. When he had the sunglasses on, he looked like Rocky Rococo. He was fucking Rocky yeah. Rococo, yeah. Later on, uh, when he had the shirt on button, I thought he looked like Burt Reynolds. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. He started as Rocky <laughs> Rococo yeah. and became Burt Reynolds. He did. Yeah. He did. Yeah. I was on board. Yeah, but it changes, right? And to this yeah. like kind of fantastical stuff where now all of a sudden they have, you know, the motorcycle with the Gatling gun on it. <laughs> it's got front end rockets. It has surprise yeah. uh, exhaust, rockets. exhaust rockets. I mean, these are like James Handlebar Bond. Uzis. Yeah, handlebar <laughs> Uzis. That's it's like wonderful. the Q branch it outfits. Sounds like some Jonah Hex Force. shit, man. It does, yeah. You know. The what? Jonah Hex. Oh, yeah. It yeah. sounds it like Jonah Hex. Yeah. It really does. Ooh, maybe that'll be a freak show pick Ooh. in the future. Oh, Jonah God. Hex. Yikes. Mm. Yikes. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, in that in that section, it feels like the movie is delivering what you've set. In, you, your ass is getting numb. Set the anticipation and yeah, for. And it's like, now we're going to give you, you know, the Chuck Norris a thon. Because they like let him loose. At the end, he is kind of off the fucking chain, right? Yeah. He's like off doing his own thing. And that's when he starts like fucking round kicking guys with the. You can just judge it by how many windows he goes through. That's like, right. He drives his fucking bike through. He goes through at least two windows at the end. Yeah. He, like, drives through one and then kicks through another one. Then he, like, stands up on his bike so he can get on the plane at the end. I'm like, eh. I mean, there's this, there's some, like, there's legitimately some shit. cool shit happening. Maybe we didn't appreciate <laughs> it by the time we got to it because we were just yeah. like, oh, Jesus, are we going to do something? Because we were so we had surprised to sit through by two it. two hours of bullshit to get to that. What yeah. are you talking about? It was like an hour of fucking, like, them going in on the one compound. No. This movie's two hours and nine minutes. It was an hour and a half of. It's too l- slow two hours shit. too long. It does feel for sure that, like, uh, even after. So, actually, yeah, because Chuck Norris does his bit, then Lee Marvin gets his action. Oh, moment. that was wonderful. Lee Marvin gets his. He's a fucking assassin. Yeah. Is Lee Marvin. But after that, it's like, okay, the movie's over, right? No. Nope. And then we got to reunite the hostages with uh, their wives. And also have the cut to the, you know, look at, like, even though there's this celebration they won. The Delta Force lost a man. They lost Dutch. Lost Butch. And, or Butch, sorry. Pete. Pete. Pete, yeah. Butch, Pete Butch. Uh MacGyver's. And McGivens. Pete Butchie MacGyver. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, even though they're these heroes, like the cost is very high or something like that. Yeah. And then, then they take off into the blue on their next mission. Delta Force 2, the Columbia Connection. Mm-hmm. And Delta Force 3, the killing game. Are you serious? I'm not kidding. Yeah. 
Is this also <laughs> <Shut up> Siri? <laughs> I Shut up, Siri. We don't want to know. Siri. Sean activated Shut Siri up. with that request. Because uh, he said, are you serious? Uh, no. yeah. Are you uh, serious? You're kind of blowing my is... mind here, though. I did not know that there was a third Delta Force. I know the second the show one. show is. It's canon. They'll do. Is it? I mean, canon I assume, will right? take they up the whatever they can. Because uh, the second one was directed by Aaron Norris. If I'm not mistaken, Chuck so, Norris yeah. is uh, direct to video Delta Force Three. The there's no Chuck Norris in that movie. In part, who's three. in it? There's a Cassavetes. Oh uh, God! Nick, Nick oh, Cassavetes no. is. In oh no! It? From the Wraith. No, <laughs> the star of the Wraith. You're Nick better Cassavetes? than that. Get out. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if Nick Cassavetes was ever there. It, John, his father. John was, is yeah. good. John yeah. is better John than that, but yeah. Nick like, might not be better. Than no, that. Yeah. he was in the Wraith. Yeah. John, uh, John is better than that, yeah, for sure. <laughs> uh, and we should also say uh, R.I.P. Lee Marvin. He died the, the year after the Delta Force yeah, came out. This is his last credit yep. ever. Oh, yeah. it's a shame. Wow, Sorry, what a horrible Marvin. tribute to a great actor. I mean, kind of. He got. I mean, he got his moment in this. He got to murder some motherfuckers. So <laughs> he has some good monologues. Take him down. You know? He's got yeah. the best yeah. voice in the movie. Yeah. <laughs> he's he's got that. Sweet watch that has a that has a <laughs> curtain over it. Yeah, he's trying yeah. to. Sort of, yeah, which which made no sense. We called that shit out. <laughs> the Velcro. You make it sound like you had he had to go <laughs> and move the like curtain a, out of the way to look at that thing. He had a Velcro strip over his watch to hide the time from anyone else because you know. well he's in charge. Only he's yeah. allowed to know, and then he orders yeah. his men to go yeah. do it. Mm-hmm. That's how that works. Which also <laughs> dates this movie a lot. I well, that's still I loved a thing. it when they had to. The guy had to like call in and like he flips open yeah. this thing on his. He's got to turn it around on his belt or something, then open it up, then find the right like channel to click. And it was like Jesus Christ! Didn't it? You, it's a lot easier now when you go. You just press your right? finger to your ear and you know whatever. Didn't I used to have like the one guy who was the radio guy and they'd open yeah. it up and they go. They had to yeah. wind, the wind it. Up. Yeah, they had to yeah. fucking wind that oh, shit yeah. and call in. Yeah. 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 So, you know, it's getting better. <laughs> <laughs> We're advancing in that technology. We're fine. <laughs> but, but why we'll was the time secret? That's, uh, right. That's what I'm confused what, about. What I think Holly was meant, right. It, was so, it, yeah. it, it wouldn't show reflection. So you can't see they the reflection. They were basically all just okay. in that flat black. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, you, you know, you can't get a sniper who's going to see your reflection yeah. and fucking blur right, right off. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But they also had, like, the blue headlights, which I don't know if that was a color correction mm-hmm. thing or what. Because I thought it was red was the light it, that doesn't. It has to be a blue ray. Correction, right? Like I don't know. It, I don't know. It felt like it, it felt was like something nobody would the see. Military, so we got blue lights, but I'm like, I'm I guessing the point was it's a light. That, it's a light that, that will help them see, but other people can't see, or it doesn't show up on a certain. Maybe it doesn't scope show or up on like. infrared. Well, that's something. It yeah. doesn't show up on a scope or something. I, you might be right. <laughs> but I think that, that's no, the point. The, reason the predator use, can't see it. Yeah. You know the reason the predator will not see them. They have like those red uh, flashlights is because I guess like the, the wavelength of red doesn't travel as far yeah. as, you know, like a white line. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's like, I'm going to be yeah, here with it. You can't see me over there. Didn't you guys know that blue doesn't show up in night vision? Uh, <laughs> Come on. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, we also forgot to talk about, uh, well, you guys, Steve James, who you were saying looked like uh, Robert Downey Jr. from Tropic Tropic Thunder. Thunder. He did. Okay, he, he, did. he definitely took his inspiration from this movie. There's no way he didn't. His cadence, his like, his look, well, I mean, his delivery, yeah. everything is exactly like, the there's same. There's no way they weren't like Robert. Have you seen Delta Force? Have you seen Delta Force? Or have you seen this <laughs> 20 second clip from Delta yeah, Force? You know, like, this is who you're. Yeah. Yeah, this is who you're emulating. Like, yeah. do this. This guy, yeah, I mean, he set. has. Is, am I wrong on this? But he's got a presence that it seems like that guy should have been, um, you know, at least on the third tier. Of yeah, it's captivating. He he's captivating. Yeah, he's. I wanted more. I think. Yeah. Okay, so Fuck I know. Butch. I know he was in American Ninja, not as the American Ninja, but know. he's like number two. But I think of the four American Ninja movies, he may be the constant. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, he may have been in all of those. And he was in one of my favorite movies. movies, To Live and Die in L.A., which yeah. is not really an action movie, but he's in that. And I'm like, that's, I think, the only things I've seen him in, but I'm sure he had a career as, sure. like, you know, he was in Chuck Norris movies, probably. Probably. It's just like Chuck Norris had his people, and it's just like, yeah, yeah. come do this movie. All right, then. I think that's it. Okay, well, then what we're going to do is stick around. We're going to go around the room and find out if you should watch the Delta Force. We're going to ask everybody, solicit everybody uh, their opinion. But first, 
We're going to summon our mailman, and we're going to answer some of your mail. So, Igor, bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. And thank you, Igor. <laughs> Thanks, Igor. Now, is that mailbag or just more Chuck Norris? Jokes? His mullet. Oh, is Jesus, it better be mailbag it. or we're going to have problems. His, I'm going to put Igor's you through a window. His mullet is, is. Does he have a mullet? Yeah. Do you, did you not see the party in the is back? It re- wait, is it real? Or is it. <laughs> did he, oh, place on, I mean, have it's a red, so I don't know if that's <laughs> either, real or not. But either, way, either way, it's greasy. So. Yeah. I, I, I'm, oh. I'm not here for it. So I think, you know, yeah. I think we need to get oh, into the rumors and get that under control. But that rope around you know? his chest will come in handy yeah. later. Oh, look, he's pregnant. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he's just wearing that rope. Yep. <laughs> Fucking that's rope. What, that was just that's how you knew they meant business on yeah. the uh, yeah. whatever yeah. the You never uh, know when you're gonna need uh, rope. Lasso. Cat burglars and yeah. special forces. <laughs> they, have a, they have a lasso around. Oh, it was always cat yeah, burglars. Like like Hudson Hawk or Chuck Norris, oh, right? Jesus yeah. Hudson Hawk. <laughs> Man. So uh well, they could have made black rope like I know, right? Why wait? would you stand out with the Why would you stand out with if you uh, whatever. Fuck. Sean, uh did you know that uh, Chuck mm. Norris is the only person who can uh, kick someone in the back of the face? That's a bad one. I, right, I'm so, not gonna, no, 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 no. Oh my okay, god. Okay, so uh Zemer 27 writes Zemer. in and he says, uh, did you know Chuck Norris lost his virginity before his dad? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I like that one. That's, that's uh, uh Nick Hammond writes in, he says Chuck Norris does not wear a condom because there's no such thing as protection from Chuck Norris. All right, yeah, I can appreciate that. I'll okay. go with that one. That's a good yeah. one. I'll go with that. Uh, thank you both for uh, writing in Chuck you Norris jokes. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chuck Norris joke aficionados. Uh, uh, thank you for commenting on the last <laughs> Chuck Norris movie we ever watch on this free oh, show. Yeah. What, Firewalker? Come on, that's a movie that's just begging for it. Okay. Why? Uh, what's that one where he, like, possesses the animal spirits? Like, there's that's one where That's gotta be Forest Warrior. <laughs> yes, that's, that's what it is. Yep, that's it. Forest the Warrior. <laughs> that's the one. Yeah. yeah. All right, I like might be up for that one. That, or whatever. Yeah, oh, yeah. Jesus. That might need to come to the yeah, yeah, show. Yeah, yeah, uh, Yep. Uh, so, about our last week's episode, Sphere... Yeah. Uh, Schlock Snob writes in and said, uh, <laughs> I had my first... to say, Schlock Snob. Schlock Snob. I like your name. Mm. I had my first Mandela Effect experience while listening to the oh. latest episode of the Saturday Night Freak Show. I could have sworn it was Larry Fishburne and not Sam Jackson in that movie. Then again, it's been about 20 years since Dude, I've seen it. Dude, yeah, when that yeah, happens yeah. to me, it, legitim- it legitimately makes me crazy. Like, yeah. have you guys ever had an experience like that where you're like... The Shazam thing, I think. The Shazam yeah. thing, yeah. Oh, yeah, okay, Shazam, for, Berenstain Bears. For yeah. me, what it, my Bear version of that Bears. is, do you, you know, the movie The Golden Compass? Yeah. yeah. Okay, I could have swore Saoirse Ronan was in that movie. She's not. Mm. It's Dakota Blue Richards, who is an actress no one has ever heard of since that movie. Huh. <laughs> but I could have swore on my Wait. life it was Sir Sharon. Is Sir yeah. Sharon in that? No, she's not. I looked it up like yesterday because I had this argument two days ago that yeah. I could have swore she was. In, no, Dakota mm. Blue Richards. Huh. Interesting. If yep. you also thought that Sir Sharona was in the Golden Compass, please write in and yep. let us know. I may only curious, think like, that because we mentioned it yeah. here They're one like, night, yeah. and She's I think not? you what may have mentioned Sir Sharona being in it. A- any sort of uh, you know Mandela effect ex- experience you have had, please tell us because it is a yeah, crazy feeling, and it yeah. makes you feel terrible and like, like you're know. insane. So yeah. please share, share it. In, you know share what? It with let us, us yeah. be your therapist. We'll yeah. share it with you. We'll get through it together. Yeah, it'll be fine. And we're free. We're yeah. free. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we we're won't free. charge we you anything. No five that. cents. Yeah. Yeah. So we're not going to judge you. Well, you do have to sit through the whole episode, I guess, to get here. But you know, that's all we. That's have. very true. That's very true. It's but still free. We won't charge you anything. No. Uh, yeah, fast forward buttons don't exist. About our long time ago episode, Daughters of Darkness. Lauren Avery writes oh, wow. in, and she says uh, she just listened to the episode. She says there was an indie vampire movie made a couple of years ago called Kiss of the Damned. It was an homage to 60s, 70s Euro vampire movies with beautiful costumes and cinematography. After listening to your Daughters of Darkness podcast, I figured it would fit in. And also, one that isn't or one that isn't often reviewed is House of Dark Shadows. She's saying it's a when she mentioned that, I didn't realize that House of Dark Shadows was Dark Shadows. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't put that together when she was talking about this. Yeah, I think the show was maybe still on when they did the yeah. feature. But uh, well, that might come on here because I own it. You do, so maybe. Yeah. And, what was Kiss uh, of the Damned? I looked and watched the trailer. That looks fucking it bloody was a as good hell. Movie. It looked it looked all right. Yeah, like I wouldn't mind watching that one. What's it had some people in it. Heroes. Milo Ventimiglia. Yeah, yeah he's, he's in, in it. it. 
and Amelia is it also from Gilmore Girls. And this yeah. is us. And this, and this is, is us. us. Yeah, so Jack he's the only huge character actor right now. Yeah, he's on the most popular TV show in the country right now. Yeah. But that's he was. Fine. He yeah. died. <laughs> oh no, he's, Jesus! He's still on. The Everyone show. knows he died. I've never. Even but heard he's of still the show. in it. He's it, still on the, the show. The way the show is told, it's all he's flashbacks. The oh, whole yeah. show is flashbacks. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, but yeah, then the, uh, I pointed out Roxanne. Is it, is What's her name? Is it is it from Ben okay. yeah. She's in that movie. Oh, okay. Uh, and Robin Lineman Silverberg writes in and recommends Hello, that we check out Larry Cohen's The Ambulance from 1990, starring Eric Roberts and James Earl Jones. Eric I'm Roberts, down. Make that, sounds awesome. yeah, that Eric sounds Roberts promising. That sounds promising. That sounds promising. An ambulance, if it picks you up. It you're takes dead. You to you're hell already dead. Back or whatever, you know. That sounds I mean, promising. So, yeah, I mean, oh, yeah, Eric down. Roberts signs on for anything, so I'm I'm game. I'm you all know? for that. That yeah, sounds um, good. James Earl Jones is more choosier with his projects, but I'm still I'm still yeah. And let's it's do a it. Larry Cohen movie from Fuck the director yeah. of the let's stuff. Do it. Mufasa. And cue the oh, winged the serpent, stuff. which should be on this show. <laughs> and the It's Alive movies. I think it's probably what he's best. Uh, oh, yeah. No, oh, yeah, yeah. They just released that in, like, yeah, Blu-ray. The box set. Yeah, yeah, the box set. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and uh, we should also mention before we get to wrap-ups that we are recording this on the eve of Chuck Norris Day. Uh, he turns 78 tomorrow. 78. Uh, so by the time you birthday, heard this. Chuck he looks Norris. nowhere near that. <laughs> Good, Good for him. I haven't seen Good him in a while. Good for him, oh, man. He's been using the tie bow. Yeah. It's, no, he's not doing the tie. Billy Blank's tie bow. I was going to say, you that? don't what use the, the tie the bow. bow. It's not a machine. It's the, the bow flex. The bow flex. Yeah. God <laughs> damn it. The bow flex. It's not, okay. He's using the tie bow. It's like, him no. not, not how that works. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. No. But, and that's why they look amazing. He uses his Have you bow seen flex. Christy Brinkley lately? She does not oh, look. Jesus. She is. She's going to be around there. She's the most wonderful woman. Timeless. Timeless. She's like 61 now, I think. Oh, she looks amazing. Yeah. She's amazing. You cannot tell by looking at her. No. He just, you know, uses his bowflex and polishes his rifles. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. That keeps him young. That's it. There you go. So we should uh, find out what everybody thought of. We're going to do final wrap-ups. It's going to be bloody, I'm sure. Here we go. Michaela, what would you think of the Delta Force? All right. So Delta Force. Um, I started taking down notes <laughs> for this movie. And in the first act of this movie, I started writing down other plane movies that I thought were either good or bad. Just like ah. I just started like naming off plane movies in general. Passenger and then seven. like by the time I got to the second act of this movie, I realized that's irrelevant because this is not a plane movie. <laughs> right. Um, right. So disregard any plane movies. I wrote oh, down. Let's talk about plane movies. Oh, do, what's I the see, one pl- do you want to hear my list? Sure. Okay. Well, what's the one plane movie where like the top of the plane blows off and they have to try and survive until they land the plane? Is anybody else, anybody oh, else is this? That, um, based on the real event that happened? Is that a uh, fucking oh, that Liam movie? Neeson? Is that Liam no, Neeson? No, no, no. Oh, this is long time. This is like oh, light plane? Uh, Concord 79. Airport Concord 79. No, I don't know. Oh, you guys never seen this movie? No. Okay, no. here's my list. You go. My list is Flight Plan with Jodie Foster. Yeah. Um, Snakes on a Plane. Oh, Red Eye Red with Red Eye. Red I love Red Killian Eye. Murphy. The West I love that. Yeah, that one. Uh, Langoliers, the, St- the Stephen yeah. King's I never that. Uh, miniseries yeah. that is not great. Yep. Um, Con Air, obviously. Yeah. Uh, we've done it before. Yeah. So go watch. Go listen to that episode. Go watch it. Yeah, watch it. Go watch it. That episode. Yep. Um, uh, Air Force it. One. <laughs> <laughs> or Braille, it, either one. Yep, bring him back the Braille. Whatever you need. Air Love Force it. One, the Harrison Ford classic, obviously. Um, and Soul Plane, the uh, oh, dear Soul Lord. Plane. Yeah, this this is what my brain came up with on the fly of of plane movies. But that's irrelevant because this is only a plane movie for the first right. thirty minutes, maybe more. Um, I kept thinking of airplane, and then uh, my my note after that that I wrote was um the opening of Short Circuit and Back to the Future has more action than this movie. That's true. Short, I mean, uh, short, yeah, circuit, short, short circuit. circuit starts out with a gunfight. Yeah. Like, starts out, like, from the get-go with a gunfight. Um, I've thought about bringing Short Circuit to the show. I'm not going to lie. I love that movie so I much. Please watch do that it. Movie again. I, I have, have I have it. <laughs> if you don't bring it, I'll bring it. So yeah. so one way or another, short yeah. circuit's gonna get covered. I've thought here. about it. I, um, I love me some Steve Gutenberg. Oh, I, I feel like oh, where yes. see shit. Oh. I I feel like I'm too close to it to bring it. If that makes sense, like I haven't brought it because I'm too close to it. You know? I love it too much. Um, Miracle also, Landing is the movie I'm thinking of, where the top uh, of oh. the top of the plane blows off and they have to yeah. fly for like another hour. Oh. And um, not, not flight or Sully. No, no, this is way older. This is like 1980. It's way older. Um, But Delta Force. Okay, so this movie started off pretty strong. Took a huge dive in the middle. Um, Didn't really resurface at the end because 
you know, you saw Chuck Norris's motorcycle blow farts on someone else. That was pretty great, but was not enough to make up for. It's a grenade launcher. Yeah, but yeah, it was, we it, should stop it, saying that. He, it's it's yeah. grenade launchers on the back of his motorcycle, which yeah. in, is actually kind of awesome. It's kind of great. Him and Steve James stood in the middle of the street and fucking rocket launchered people. Did but, you say that rocket launchered? No, but sorry. for how much time I had to sit and wait for that to happen, not worth it. Like the amount of time I had to sit in a chair waiting for that to happen was not worth it. Um, I I am very uneducated in Chuck Norris anything other than Walker Texas Ranger, um, so I would not recommend this movie. I think it takes far too long to get to the point. I feel like it's three different movies kind of shoved together into one, um, which is not unheard of for canon. So I I'm not that surprised by it. But for a canon movie, I expected a little bit more because at least Cobra had a really good chase scene and some really good moments and some really hilarious moments. This movie took far too long to get to those points, so I would not recommend it. I mean, there might be better Chuck Norris movies out there. I just haven't seen them yet. Literally, the only two Chuck Norris movies I've seen are this and Top Dog. And we may never see them. And I, Yeah, I might not revisit them because this has not been a good second experience, so I, I do not recommend Delta Force. Sean. Uh, it is a movie called The Delta Force, and we don't get a lot of the Delta Force in this movie. True. We get it at the very end of this movie, which is perfectly fine, but I don't know. The movie, I don't think, it, I, maybe it tries to be too many things. Like, the first third of this movie, it's a perfectly fine movie if that's what they want this movie to be, but they change what exactly. they want this movie to be as they keep going in the movie. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm all in for the movie they gave us because, you know, everyone did a a pretty good job at the beginning of this movie when it was like a a drama hijacking movie. But then we keep changing and keep changing and keep changing. Then we go into this movie, again, as we're, I think, most of us are uneducated as far as what Chuck Norris means in uh, in, in the movie world. So I don't know what we were expecting, but what we got wasn't what I thought we were going to get. Um, but looking at what we did get, it felt like I don't know. They didn't decide on what they wanted, and they didn't uh, they didn't pick a target and go for it. Um, I don't recommend the Delta Force. Um, I, if you want to make a whole movie that gives me the last twenty minutes of this movie, and you know, make an hour and a half and not two hour movie of it, I'm all for that. Like, give me that movie and put Chuck Norris in that, and then I'm perfectly fine. Um, but this doesn't have enough of what I wanted in it to be entertaining. Um, uh, so yeah, I'll, I'll pass on the Delta Force. It doesn't, uh, I don't think it quite knows what it wants to do. So nope, no Delta Force for me. Holly? Here's the thing. Let's, uh, <laughs> this is going to be good because Holly's fucking wasted. Here's the thing. I want to talk about side t- sidekicks. Um, <laughs> of course you do. I, I need to talk about it because I fucking love that movie so much. Jonathan Brandis, Chuck Norris, <laughs> Joe fucking Piscopo. Joe I love Piscopo that, movie. that movie. He's the like the leader of the bad dojo. Like, Jesus, I haven't watched that movie in like a long He's like the villain. Time. That sounds Joe, on brand. Like, Joe that sounds Pis- perfectly on brand. Come on now. Joe Piscopo's the villain of that yeah. movie. <laughs> let's let's right. do this. I love that movie so much, and I haven't seen it in a long time. I can't find it anywhere, so I'm taking this opportunity to ask all of you, Help Shout me Factory. get Mondo. this movie. I need it on Blu-ray. I, w- I will spend more than what it's worth, but I don't want to spend like $100 because that's what it that's, is wherever I can find it right now. Yeah. Um, Just help me find this movie, please, this is everyone. Not, on a, like, not that I uh, endorse it or anything, but this is not on a... Uh, it's not digitally found to download anywhere. I'm not good at that sort of thing. So. I mean, I'm... I'm too I mean, good at that sort of thing, so I'm not going to do it. Yeah. <laughs> no, again, I don't endorse it, and I don't want anybody Here's to do it, but thing. can it not be found there? It's not Blue Underground, and it's not yeah. Shout Factory, so no. So the yeah. answer to that question is no. Yeah. So if anyone knows anything, please write to us at the Saturday Night Freak Show. Help me find Sidekicks on DVD. Yeah, DVD Dom, is Dom, fine. go looking for this shit in Australia. It, we'll does, t- it doesn't mail even it have us. to be Blu-ray. Just DVD, please. I need it. A okay. version to watch. I need it. Um... Delta Force. This movie... This movie was like... 
was like a bad relationship. You're at the end of you're at the you're at the breakup, right? You're at the tail end, and the person you're trying to break up with is finally giving you everything you wanted, <laughs> but it's at the tail end and it's too little, too late. Oh my god, that's the best fucking analogy that's I've a, ever fucking pretty heard. Good, yeah. Don't watch Holy Delta shit. Force. I'm done. That's it. That's pretty good. That, too that's, little, too late. That's the best review that's you've like good. ever done. Thank you. That is incredible. I, I wish I would have thought it. If I could drop this mic, I would, but I'm not going to do that because they're expensive. Brought to you by Spumante Andre. Wow. That was yeah. pretty great. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Andre. Bravo. Uh, well, I saw a different movie it. than you guys did. So <laughs> this is the thing. I guess, and maybe, you know, again, I'm thinking the expectation that you had coming into it, you know, and I, I think, you know, just by saying, like, it's Saturday Night Freak Show, we're going to watch Chuck Norris. Like, I think you had a mm-hmm. different idea in your head. When I watched it, I guess, you know, you were sitting there, you know, going like this is a thriller that eventually becomes a Chuck Norris, you know, like a, a an action movie. And then it was like, yeah, yeah, yeah you know, and it's uh, it's weird. The, I mean, I, I grant you that it's over long. I mean, you can edit the living shit out of this movie because Golan plays for well, I think two things are against him. One. He uh, desperately wants you to uh, align yourselves primarily with the 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 hijacked victims at the beginning. Yeah. And oversells it, I think. Uh, and I, I don't know if that's his objective. I just think that a little bit would have gone longer. And but because he had these, uh, you know, great actors from the uh, 50s, 60s and 70s in his movie, it's like they're going to be central focuses of the of this first half you know we're gonna make these strong dramatic things i mean it's almost like a holocaust movie i remember watching yeah. like uh what was it war and remembrance and stuff yeah. like that and you know or schindler's list you get the the violins playing it's like here's the you know these people being separated from the rest of every you know it was just uh so i but i also think that you know tonight you know, you guys came down here and thought it was going to be fun. And then it's like, this is fucking heavy <laughs> fucking shit. You know, it's like oh, Arab Jesus. terrorists and, you know, Jews being Germans called and out. Jews. And, you know, like, oh, my uh, God. Hijackings. And there's no Chuck Norris. Shit. And like, yes. what's going on? Too much for a post 9-11 world. Yeah. Possibly. See, if possibly. it was Steven Seagal, he would have been on that plane. He'd have been like fucking. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> messing so, with people. Even in a Nick Cage kind of air situation, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Golan's second thing that he's that he well, he's embracing it. It, but now it's you know uh, uh, probably a, uh, uh, a detriment of the movie is he's trying to uh, follow uh, history you know and provide a history lesson or you know a, a look yeah. behind the curtain because we didn't have 24 hour news it wasn't CNN in 1986 right. so this was you know aside from like reading That's the true, documents. Yeah. This was like, we actually can go to the theater. I mean, it's just amazing. To me, it almost kind of does reek of, uh, I mean, exploitation, right? I mean, like, yeah. this happened in June, and the movie was out in February. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is this is. Oh, definitely, yeah. This is That's exactly what it is. Exactly yeah. that. This yeah. is them seeing that and realizing that and jumping on that potential to do that, of course. But it's also, uh, you know... It's it's fantasy wish fulfillment in a way that like, okay, so this happened in June and it's never going to really ever get resolved, you know, because the guys uh, got away. So in Menachem Golan's mind, it's like we're going to give the audience this catharsis of having the American military, Chuck Norris at the head of it, you know, and Lee Marvin right in and fucking save the day. The movie ends with all the passengers drinking Budweiser and <laughs> singing America the Beautiful. Right. I mean, it is like rah, rah. United States is awesome. One of the characters says, I think, you know, he's like a, a Russian uh, Orthodox. Uh, yeah. He, you know, it's like America has been very good to me. And I'm like, that's Menachem Golan talking through that character. It's weird to see such a. Pro- well, is it weird? I don't know. To me, like, you know, with that layer of, um, you know, thinking about it, it's like, you know, you've got this Israeli filmmaker making this like super pro like American movie. Uh, or American, what are you, cheering for America? Statement. What do you call it's, a, it's, a pro America. it's a pro-American statement. Yeah, yeah he's cheerleading for America. Patriotic. Uh, is an interesting, because, you know, it's not like, uh, you know, because I think that was what keyed me into this. You said earlier, you know, it's like, it's not really a Hollywood movie, and it's like it isn't. It's like the outside Hollywood product. So I think that, you know, puts an, an interesting angle on the movie, but then I also think that by the time you get to the third act, 
and the shit's blowing up real good. It's like there's a lot of stunt work and stuff in there that I actually was like, that's pretty cool. He's sliding down a rope, you know, <laughs> like anybody else would slide down a rope, but Chuck Norris slides down a rope like firing his Uzi. <laughs> he did. You know, and he oh, works his way up to that fight with, um, you know, Robert Forrester, who's like clearly outmatched. I don't know what the fuck. It's like, just run, Robert yeah. Forrester. Get the hell out of there. You're up against Chuck fucking Norris, the Terminator, who just like, at one point, that roundhouse was awesome because it like, that looked painful. Yeah, it looked like he kicked him. <laughs> he just went, like, and the guy's like in the other oh. room. <laughs> Yep. Um, so that kind of stuff I dig. And again, uh, my impression of this movie from before was that was the stuff that somehow I think because it was the end and it does feel like, uh, you know, by the time you get to the end, you know, when the, the action starts up, it does feel like that's another hour. At least to me, it felt like you're going through this like, you know, longish hour of uh, hostage drama followed by a little bit of espionage and figuring all this stuff out. And there's backtracking, you know, like, okay. And then finally it's like, now we're, you know, we're coming in on the surf and going underneath the, you know, the pipes and we're blowing yeah. shit up. We're setting detonators and we're rescuing hostages. And, you know, uh, so it feels like that's another hour. I don't know. I mean, maybe it goes faster because, you know, action tends to, but it seems like that goes on for a while and that left a good impression on me. So I think, Controversial, controversial opinion. Well, actually, none of you guys can disagree with me on this. Really, uh, I think this is the best ch- movie Chuck Norris has ever made. <laughs> yeah, because, we can't disagree. Well, we, we, I was going to say can, sidekicks. Well, I, can I mean, absolutely uh, disagree. maybe. <laughs> but the reason I think is because I said earlier, I think Chuck Norris is a shitty fucking actor. Yes. Uh, yeah. His, I mean, he's obviously an athlete, and he can deliver, you know, the kicks and all that other shit. But he can't emote for shit. There's something I just don't buy it when he when he talks. I don't mm-hmm. believe anything that he says, and he has zero personality. And like I said, I've seen several of his movies, his older ones and uh, his, uh, you know, this period. And it's like, what the, I don't see the appeal of this guy. And so that's why I kind of like the idea that in this movie, they surrounded him with, uh, you know, two strong performances from, you know, veterans. Well, I don't know if Robert Forrester was at that point. Yeah, how old old is he in this? Well, Forrester had done, I'd seen him in Alligator before this, like five years. That's a good movie. It's a giant alligator under New York. This kid flushes an alligator down, that baby alligator down. Oh, fuck. Why aren't we watching Alligator? (laughs) Oh, my God. Next uh, week, Alligator. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I would recommend Delta Force. Uh, now that you've listened to this whole podcast, you kind of know <laughs> what you're going for. But you know, mm-hmm. if you're if you're still interested, I think you should check it out because uh, it's kind of cool. So next week, Sean, what, what are we, we going to be watching? We are going to be watching The Wraith. <laughs> Starring Charlie Sheen. Oh, God. And Nick Cassavetes. Nick Cassavetes. Holy and shit. And Sherilyn Yeah. Oh, yeah. And We're going into trip. it. Uh, well, it's Clint funny Howard? that you mentioned it. Did you mention Yeah, Clint Howard. Okay. Did you mention it earlier because you you had an idea, or did you just mention trying, it out of... Well, you were, you were trying you were to gonna, force me into it? pick something else. I'm like, let's like, throw this into a uh, some kind of the I rig. feel like this is just <laughs> below, like, sleepwalkers and, like, movies that should be done on the freak show. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, it goes know. sleepwalkers, the wraith, and then he goes... Like, I've never seen you know. this movie. What? I, I've never seen the wraith. Uh, but my a bunch I'm, of people I know just got we're just having a conversation about. I'm just I've like, never seen this. Movie. The idea of it and what I know about it just sounds like wh- what? Yeah, it it's sounds like the perfect. crow, but he's got a. a he's, it's a crow, but he's, but he's got, got a, a car. car. Yeah, and, but it yeah. sounds good. But not. But, but is the crow good? I don't, we'll, we'll but it might it. have a killer eighty Watch soundtrack. We'll discuss it next yeah. week. Okay, so that's next week on the Saturday Wraith. Night Freak Show, The Wraith. Stay tuned, and until then, thank you for listening. And the basement is going dark.